Hello, everyone. I'd like to thank the SP group for the invitation and all of you who, is, who took the time to be here learning today. Also, I would like to thank Dr. Brunella Rodriguez for sharing her finds with us. Brunella Palastrelli Rodriguez is a bachelor in forest engineering and holds a master and a PhD degrees in forest science from the Federal University of Espírito Santo in Brazil. Her research area is forest products technology. She has been working with wood anatomy, wood identification, and wood properties in general. In the past years, her research focuses more on wood quality from forest plantations, especially studies related to the influence of abiotic stress and contrasting environments on, like, on eucalyptus wood quality. To relevant abroad work experience were her internship at CONE. CET in Mendoza, Argentina, where she learned about the dendrochronology techniques and when she was a visiting student at the Forest Products Lab in Madison, USA, where she worked closely with the NE team. Besides the research activities, she also has teaching experience once she gave class to the forest engineering and wood industry engineering undergrad course as a temporary professor. Currently, she's a postdoc fellow funded by COPS in Brazil, work at the graduate program of forest science at the Southwestern Bahia State University. It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Brunella Rodriguez. Hi, thank you, Philippe. Thank you, you all for having me here this morning. It's a pleasure being here as a, a speaker because last year I also attended to this amazing event and um, for me, it's, it's a such a pleasure being here speaking for this amazing audience here. So as Philip introdu introduced me and uh, he said about my background, I'm a forest engineer and I hold my master and my PhD uh, in the forest science, but my uh, expertise or my field area is about uh, wood technology in general. And uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how the abiotic stress that we called eucalyptus physiological disorder could affect the wood quality and the wood properties required for pulp production. And this is study for the people are here and it's from abroad were developed here in Brazil, and it's a project that I work on my master time when I was in my graduate time. So, um, uh, it's in the special, uh, just I will take the laser point here. Mm, yeah, there we go. So, uh, this uh, presentation will cover some introduction about the um, the, this problem, the abiotic stress, and uh, we will let, I will let you know about the importance of the study. And then we go through the material and methods, results, and some conclusions. And for the end, our outline presentation, we go to the Q&A session, but I'd like to say uh, it's the Q&A discussion session because sometimes we don't have all answers, so hope we can get good insights here today. About the forest, the Brazilian forest sector, now uh, um, based on the last annual report, we have area, uh, from a forest plantation area with eucalypts now over 9 million hectares. And from this total area, around 7 million hectares, it's covered by eucalypt genus. So now we can see how important is this genus for the first, uh, the Brazilian forest sector. Uh, based on the, the global area, we are very important. Sorry, we had a very important area here in Brazil. And let me take this. I don't know. Yeah, he's better. So, what is the the use of these areas, the wood areas? So, part of that material 
it's used for charcoal production. Other parts it's used for panel in general, like the OSB panels, for also for timber. And the eucalypts could be used for construction, for furniture, for different use that need uh, mechanical resistance as well. And uh, the biggest sector here that we will be talking about today is about the pulp and paper sector. And uh, it's very important sector to Brazil because uh, like over 40 years, 40 years ago, the, the government started to planting and start to improve the, for the, forest, the forest, forested areas in Brazil. And now with the tree breeding, we have a high technology and a high performance clones here, growing in different areas with different needs. And um, we have a really good... Um, Adapto climates uh, uh, variables here for for growing eucalyptus. About the the topic that we will talk to you today, uh, we called this a biotic stress as a eucalyptus physiological disorder. And what is this abiotic stress? This is a, a disease, some people used to say this is a new disease, but it's, it's not a disease by uh, biotic, by biotic uh, etiology, it's a biotic one. And um, the, the principal uh, idea that we have about this condition, this event, it's, about, it's related to the atypical climate variations. So, what it's happened in Brazil and around the globe. So we are having uh, a different um, and atypical climate variations. And in Brazil, that is not different. Some areas here, especially at the Northeast part in Brazil, we are having uh, a different quantity of raining and different periods of the year because uh, as, uh, as part of the audience here, we can see that the Brazil has a good raining and a good distribution, but that is changing a little bit. And once those clones were selected for this regulate distribution, now these clones are having problems with their growth because the temperature, also the raining, the precipitation are changing, uh, the quantity and also the, 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 how may I say that, and the time of the year, the month of the year that this, this raining are, are, are falling, are going down. And other variables that is related to the air, air humidity and also the temperature. This is very important ones to understand why this problem, why this issue is occurring in Brazil in the past decade. So uh, when we see, I like this, this picture right here. I like this photo because you can see how the clone could be sensitive now here we can see two different cones and how this cone could be sensitive to different variations. And uh, this is like us, the human beings. Sometimes uh, we have the, the diet that we, we eat, uh, uh, the, we eat uh, regular foods every day. And sometimes we take out some of that food that really make us happy and energized. And that's occurred the same for the trees. If you, you, if you make something different at the environmental, that tree could be stressed. And in this case, we call that physiological disorder. And it's a mix of variables occurring the same time there that, that cause these damage. 
So what kind of damage this EPG, I will call that in the, the presentation because that would be easy and fast. And how the EPG uh, 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 cause some damage on the tree. The, the principal damage that we can see visually, it's related to the growth disorders. So uh, when we came to the uh, first plantation, uh, the, the eucalypts plantation, we see the trees there and how we can identify this event. We can identify this, this disease. Uh, most of the trees lost the apical dominance. And here in this picture, we can see an uh, example of that. So when the tree loss, it start to loss in this, the apical dominance, uh, what is what is the strategy of the tree to keep growing, growing? So some trees start to uh, create a forking, and the crown sometimes uh, start to get a different way of growing to to keep survive survive. And other thing that it's visually and sometimes we can also measure it it's the reduce of the growth. So once the, the trees start to losing the, the apical dominance, the photosynthesis, the all physiological uh, system start to be affected. So, and the, the, the principal response or the immediately response will be the re reducing the growth. And other than that we can, see visually, it's related to the mine conkers on the stems, on the trunk of the tree. So this is a couple of damages. And right here, we can see other damages that could be caused uh, when we have a plantation with, with this abiotic stress. So in the right photo, we can see many lateral sprouts. So once the tree lose the apical mary stem and it's, it and it start to reduce the growth, the tree create a strategy to 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 get these new sprouts, these new branches to keep survival. Other thing that we can see on the field when we are visiting some stand with this disease, it's about the cranks that I mentioned before, the mine cranks. And uh, right here, the exudates uh, here on the stem in the, the bark part. So this is the other thing that's very important and interesting to mention here related to this, uh, this disorder. Uh, and sure, the death of the leaves. And in extremely conditions, when this abiotic stress, it's uh, extreme, sometimes the tree can, can, can dead. So, and, and, and uh, when we compare, for example, uh, a plantation with this disorder, you can find in the same plantation, different levels of this disorder. So, and now we are going to talk about the wood quality of this material. We talk, we have talked about the, the visually, how we can visually identify this disorder. And right here, our goal, it's, a, it's for pulp production. So we, related to that, we create here two big questions. How those damages, so how the, eucalyptus physiological disorder could affect the wood quality. So visually we, we saw that damages, but how about the wood quality? Could affect or could not? So here today we're going to discuss some results about it. And if there is such a difference, how we can or how we could recommend the use of the this raw material to the industry. The industry could use that wood or not. 
how we can recommend that and talk about the wood quality, especially for pulping production and pulping process, uh, we can, of course, uh, we can create a topic with a lot of variables here, but I decide to choose three, uh, three ones related to the chemical, physical and pulp variables. That was the variable that we um, measure in this, this project. So, and for pulp production, and we got, and how we can get this wood quality, we need to see all these variables to get to, to see what is the end use and how this problem could affect the end use. In our case here, the pulp in production. So uh, regarding, regarding to the object or the goal of this project was to study and was to evaluate the effect of the EPD on the wood quality for pulping. To perform this study, we select uh, a clone. This clone is a hybrid between eucalyptus grants and eucalyptus urophila. This clone in special uh, was the this one was selected by the company um, maybe five years before this one yeah, start to be implanted, to be planted in the area. And for the, the, the beginning of the stories, when the breeders select this cloning special, he, that clone was considered with high performance. What that mean? High performance clone is the clone that grows very well, can produce uh, a really good volume of wood and the end of the rotation, and also have good, uh, have like right um, average of the density, the chemical properties, and also the pulping variables. So these clones was one of the high performance clones of the, that company. And unfortunately, the clone started to get this problem. And uh, why we decide to study this clone in special? Because when we de designed this project in that time, we had a considered area and that area we will supply the wood to the company for pulping, and uh, we are trying to get a way to use this wood without damage to the, the industry. So based on that, we went to the field and select the, the area to this study, uh, which was this area. There were, that area were, was located at the, the southern part of Bahia State in Brazil. Here we have uh, uh, a location that we design this project. This is the Brazil map and right here is the southern part of Bahia State, this huge state here in Brazil. And the place where we collect was right here in Bahia. And here we can see the, the stand that we study. So this was very special one because we can see in the same uh, period, I mean, when the, uh, those cones were planted there was in the same period. And unfortunately, this stand, sorry, this one start to, to have problem. And that was amazing for us just for this project, of course, that's not amazing to have this kind of problem, but we select the, these two stands and we consider them representative because they show to us visually two levels of EPD, the lower one and the higher one. And to perform this study, we cut down nine trees for, trees for each level and we studied them. The clones in that time that we collect 
uh, was 42 months old. I mean, around 3.5 years old. And uh, for us in Brazil, it's uh, a considered uh, age to have a problem in a, a eucalyptus plantation. And uh, right here, we can see these stands that we took those pictures on field and the picture and the, le the left side here, the picture A, we can see this clone with lower stress and the right side, we can see the clone with higher stress. And here we can identify a couple of damages that we talked at the beginning of the presentation. So we also uh, measure, besides to the, the wood qualities and the wood properties, we also get some biometric, biometric measurements and the GBH in 3.5 years old was 14.5 for this lower one and 11.9 for the high one. And when we look at here and compare, we can see how the, the stress also affects the, the growth that we mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. So that's a, a very good uh, image that we can compare. To, to compare the, 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 the high level, the higher level of EPG symptoms between the lower one, this contrast, we create the, the treatment one and the treatment two. And uh, after that, we also got a reference material that we collect on the pile of the wood chips on the, the industry. So, and after that, we create two new treatments. So the first one is related to the lower EPG symptoms that we mentioned here. And the second treatment is the higher one. The third is related to our re reference that we collect from the company that is the wood, is a mix of wood chips that the company use every day for the process. And after that, based on our hypothesis that the higher stress level gets negatively properties to the wood, we also create the four and the five treatments, the fourth and the five treatments. So right here, we used 80% of the treatment tree, our reference, plus 20% of the wood from the higher symptoms level. And the, the last one was related to the opposite, right? 20% of the treatment three, our reference, plus 80% of the wood from the higher stress level. And here we have these summarized procedures and standards that we use to collect these variables related to the chemical and also to the pulping, um, I mean, to the cooking process. Uh, related to the cooking process, we used the routine in the lab of the company. And for that, we fixed the kappa number and 18 more or less one and residual alcohol between one and five and liquor sulfide in 35 more or less one. And the overcooking time was 209 minutes. And I would like to, to make sure that was uh, the fixed that we use for the, the cooking process. And of course, uh, the active alkali charge in, in different conditions could be varied and because that we didn't fix this variable. variable. And uh, right here, Thank you. 
we have a couple results uh, about this project. And, uh, and in that first table, we can see the, the results related to the contrasting woods. So the lower stress and the higher stress one. When we look at the wood density, or in this case, the specific grade of the wood, we can see that the density wasn't affect about this physiological disorder. Otherwise, the extra teeth and the lignina was affected, the high, was high affected by the EPG. Why? Because here we can see how the extra teeth increase when we compare the lower to the higher one. And the same thing for lignin right here. So this is so important to mention because they will directly affect the cooking process. And one thing that it's interesting to mention that about the pentagons, this uh, principal carbohydrate that we measure here wasn't affected by the EPG in this project. So when we compare the low and the high symptoms level for the cooking variables, we can see here clear, very clear how the chemical components, sorry, how the, the chemical contents affected directly the cooking variables right here. So for the wood with higher symptoms level, we need to use a higher alkali uh, charge. And for, for the cooking process, also we need to increase the temperature. And uh, when we see the screened yield, we can see how decrease this around 4% here. This is too much when you 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 um you transfer this this number to the company 4% of your yield it's a lot so after that as i mentioned at the material and methods we create uh three more treatments because the first question was replied right here so there is difference how the eucalyptus physiological disorder could affect. We can see that affect negatively to the chemical pro com components. And after that, we create uh, uh, three more treatments to get a, a use, a rational use of this wood because the plantation wasn't that and we can use this wood. So, and how much we can use in the process. And here we have the wood mix that we call our reference in that time. So, uh, and here we have the alkali charge and the temperature and the residual of this alkali and also the screened yield. So, you can see right here that it's a good reference, right? So when we create these two more treatments right here, what we can see that when you use uh, less of this material, it's good because we can keep our, especially our screened yield because there wasn't different right here. And unfortunately, when we, we tried to use more material uh, merged in this reference, that wasn't that good. So we can see here the, the chemical, the alkali charge, the chemical that we use for the lignification was uh, increased and the screen yield decreased and that is not um, a good thing. So 
uh, as a conclusion and regarding to the 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 results that we had here we can say that the results show that the EPG symptoms hearing and not influence the wood density and pentagens for this study in special. However, demonstrated that has affected negatively as we could see uh, in the past slides, uh, the extractives and the lignin content. Overall, the wood chemical composition from the trees with higher EPG symptoms affected directly the cooking process variables. So that was the uh, a big conclusion that we could uh, see for this age, 3.5 years old. But we stay with and a big question in our minds in that time because so uh, the, this disorder in Brazil, it's common to occur when they, in this age, like in this um, young age in the plantations. And then because that we decide to back in the same plantation area, going through to the same stands that we collect before and we collect the material uh, around over one and a half years old, around five years old. So, and uh, we would like to, to see if after this time, the wood could uh, create a, like the, the wood formation after this time could affect uh, the, the process because this age it's more close to the final rotation because in Brazil we use for whole production, eucalypts with eucalypts around seven years old or in, in, some, um, in some regions uh, until six years old. That would depend how is the site and how is the cone that we are using here. So based on that, we back in the same stands there collect more trees in, the, in that second visit, we collected, um, the first one we collect nine from each level and right here we collect 12. So we did uh, the same analysis and what we could find. Visually, we found a plantation looks like for us were recovering for this problem, but then how about the wood? So in here we can see how the change the wood had in these one and a half years between the first and the second collected. So here we can see the specific grade gravity that was a little bit higher than the, the, the wood that was affected by the EPG symptoms, higher EPG symptoms. The extractives keeps uh, different, but the difference between was uh, we had a decreasing here and the same for lignin. The, the, the lignin wasn't different in this time and the pentosan keep the same. So how about the cooking variables for that second, um, uh, that second perform that we, we, we measured? So we could see here that the chemical composition that was is still different, but not so uh, high between the, the, these contrasting, uh, wasn't affect was the first collect. So, and here we can see how the trees in this situation, I would like to, to mention that that was for that situation in, in, in special, uh, we, we see here that the trees could recover from this, this problem. And how about the, the growth? And these are the pictures from the second time that we went to the field. And in the left side, again, the lower EPG symptoms and the higher, higher EPG symptoms in the right side. 
and we can see here that the trees uh, growth, but the the higher stand, they stand with higher EPD symptoms, is still have uh, decreasing the 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 sorry the growth of the tree, and uh, you could ask me so. In this situation, we don't need to worry about the, the wood supply, but unfortunately, when we go through the volume of this plantation was decreased in a double. So in 100%, this is so um, worrying. We need to, to keep this in mind because even though the wood properties could be recovered, the wood volume here could not because the trees need to spend more energy to keep survive here. And this is a really good thing. It's a really good situation to see here. And based on that and the general conclusion, the wood mix supplement, supplemented in, in, in the 42 month old was useful to direct the rational use of the trees that grow under a high level of EPG symptoms. And in case like that, for example, if you have a plantation that the results of the wood uh, chemical and cookie properties were close to ours here, you can, just, you can use a dose less than 20% under higher EPD level to the pulp companies. You must to merge this material in others that the company uh, usually uh, in their routine, in daily routine. So, and related to the second time that we went to the field and collect the wood for analysis, even though the growth seems was recovered because visually the trees were uh, recovered because the tree survivor of this abiotic stress, we need to keep a special attention for the supply of the wood materials in the cellulose companies to minimize problems in the pulping process because the, the company has a, a huge plantation, has huge plantation areas and they had um, they had to predict how is the volume that we will collect we will harvester for next month and the next so and if something's happened like that and you have no material to to harvester in that stand that you predict that could be a big problem to the company so uh, we are going to the end of the presentation and as a strategy for the program for first improvement, it's important to the breeders to select genotypes with are less sensitive to the environmental variations. Uh, I mean, the companies must to select clones classified as tolerant or sensitive to uh, abiotic stress, in our case, physiological disorder. That's important to keep in mind to, to have a good material and that not affect the, the, the industry. Uh, also, um, when we talk about quality and also about quantity, because that's, that's not uh, interesting that you have a good uh, material with the quality, but you have no, not material to use. So we need to keep this in mind. And um, I'd like to say thank you so much for the audience here in this morning, Brazil, and maybe evening or afternoon in different countries around the globe. And I would like also to say thank you to uh, the university where I got all my degrees that was Federal University of Espírito Santo State. And I'm a pleasure to say that I came from that university. I got my bachelor, my master, and my PhD there. 
And I also would like to say thank you to Susano Company because I had been working with this company since I was in my graduate undergraduate time. So in my graduate thesis, I work with materials from that company. In my internship, I work with materials and uh, trees from that company. Uh, my master was the same and my PhD as well. In my PhD, I work with the contrasting environmentals. That was a good topic as well to discuss maybe next time in the new opportunity. And, and yeah, I would like to say thank you to the CAPS, to, to the founded me by a fellowship and um, for the my Brazilian guy here, I would like to say muito obrigada por, por estarem aqui nesse dia. And uh, if you want to contact me, you can use this email right here. Or if not, you can find me on LinkedIn or ResearchGate platform. You just need to type my entire name there and, and find me. Okay, so let's go to the Q&A Q session. <laughs> thank you. Dr. Rodriguez, thank you very much for your enlightening talk. It's a very interesting work. Congratulations. Our audience asked many questions for you. The first one is from Felipe from Lansing in Brazil. He asks, Dr. Rodriguez, how to balance genetic, genetic variability against productivity in breeding programs to prevent the occurrence of pests and disease at eucalyptus crops. So hi, Philip, And I would like to say thank you to Philippe as well because he made this, this contact with me and invited me to be here today. And um, thank you. So uh, could you uh, repeat the question, Philip, please? Yes. Of course, how to balance genetic variability against productivity in breeding programs to prevent the occurrence of pet, of disease at eucalyptus crops? How, how to balance genetic variability and productivity? I'd like to say this is a $1 million question. <laughs> this is what... Um, this is what the, the breeders and the foresters, the, the people um, are, are working every day because that is not easy. There isn't a recipe for that. And uh, I, I would like to say that the strategy, it's develop new uh, genotypes for different areas. So, uh, we call that the the specific clones. We could have the Philip. You can also correct me because you are a breeder guy, and you can feel free to to interrupt me and correct. So there is a uh, two kinds of clones: the specific ones and the and the others with plas plasticity. So the plasticity ones was the clones related uh, that we can have uh, the growth in the average, the density in the average, but it's a kind of a kind of clone that you can plant uh, the same clone in different areas. That clone you you'll be good there. So to to manage to manage this this strategy, it's really difficult and it's good to be difficult because this can, because that we are here, we are working to develop uh, answers for that. And um, the, the idea is like we had clones with high performance in each side, but it's, it's hard to select. For example, if I had a hundred different sites, I will have a hundred different clones. How will be the, the seedling production. That will be crazy, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a $1 million question, Philip. And uh, yeah, we can, we can discuss more, yeah. 
Thank you. The sec second question is so, from... Sorry, uh, just one thing that I remember here. And besides okay. that, Philip, it's important to select cons, as I said in, in, the, in the presentation, at my conclusion, to select cons that could be um, less sensitive to these changes. So, and because that Brazil are having a, a big net with a lot of plantations from the tax project that becomes from the IPF, uh, it's uh, University of Sao Paulo State, and also the Suzano, that company that I mentioned here, the Suzano has a other big project because that company uh, are located in different states in Brazil and they are uh, create this big net between different sites and select and create this, how may I say that, this, the big selection of maybe new clones, new high performance clones. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> Thanks. The second question is from Julia in Brazil. She asks, can the physiological disorder levels and the growth traits be st statistically correlated for further predictions? How does it work in practice? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's close to the Philip one. It's 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 hard to 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 say and i'm not confident to reply, reply her but i i guess julia we need new studies because uh that study that i present here for you today uh we we finished that project in 2013 and after that a colleague called ana paula camera she also worked with this this is the same topic in a different area in Brazil, in the Northeast area in Marion, I'm not sure. And after that, I also read about the Juliana Jardim. I'm not sure, but is that a researcher? And she also worked with hoping variables and blanching and different ones. And in Brazil right now, I just can I can just see these three uh, researchers, mine, Anna, and Juliana. And uh, to reply, Julia, I would like to say that we need new projects, new design projects to to get this answer because to predict that it's so hard because you must predict the environmental conditions and how will be the climate in the next 10 years or the next 50 years. So this, for me, it's a new area that if you there on the audience are looking for something new to research, I really would like to say to, to, to go in this area because we need a lot of answers. <laughs> because we have a lot of questions. It's a good advice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, the third question is from Bruna, from Brazil. Do edaphoclimatic problems such as water stress alter the best cutting age for roots in cellulose? Yeah, they, they do, because uh, the water is the... I. I would like to say the, the principal component to, to growth and plant. And for eucalypt, that is not different. We know that this genus is not so um, uh, sensitive for the stress, but the, the water is still being important for the physiological system of the tree for transport, transportation of the nutrients. So, but yeah, uh, the idea here, I'm just having a, a, a brainstorm right now and I, I can have different ways to reply her. So the first thing that I, I would like to, to mention here, it's about the, the strategy of the companies to select clones less sensitive to uh, water deficit 
And um, yeah, if you have a, a right cone for the right side, probably you don't need to, to let the trees over seven years and the end of the rotation, for example. So, but if you still, uh, if you not develop these, yeah, you could uh, need a different uh, rotation for cutting for the harvester of your forest. I don't know if I, I got it, but yeah. Thank you. Uh, the fourth question is from Maria Teresa from Brazil. Uh, she asked, asks, uh, we know that some problems that alter the plant's phys physiology, such as the lack of water, also change the chemical composition of the wood for cellulose production, most of the, of the time in a negative way. How to use the, these unfavorable wood in pulp mills with, without losing quality? Sorry, Felipe, uh, your voice cut a little bit uh, for me. I'm sorry. But I, uh, I guess her question is pretty close to the 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 idea that we talk in in our presentation. But if you want to re to repeat, yes. yeah, you're right. It, it, yeah, it's it's basically how to use these unfavorable wood in pulp mills without losing quality. Yeah, I guess the answer we show on the presentation, uh, you must to collect uh, wood material and analyze the chemical components and uh, how is the, especially the lignin content and the extractives to uh, get a good direction to use. So uh, right here in our discussion today, I, I show to you that we found a, how may I say, the rationale use less than 20%. So if some truck are getting to the company with this kind of material, we will just use from the high percent of wood chips will grow through the, the coking process, you must use just 20% of this material, but you must make sure if this material were affected, because sometimes that will depend of what kind of clone and what kind of site you collect these trees. So I'd like to, to say that. I don't know if I, I, I got her question right, but yeah. Thank you. Uh, the, the fifth question is from Priscilla from Brazil. She ask, asks, a uh, great presentation, Brunella. Is Corimbia more or less uh, suscept susceptible to physiological disorders in comparison to eucalyptus? Could you please talk a little about it? Yeah, the Corimbia genus is in the highlights and uh, I, I'd like to say I'm not uh, confident to reply her and I could find this answer talking to a few people after the presentation, but at uh, the literature, we don't have any studies related to physiological disorders to uh, Corimbia genus. Um, yeah, that is a good question. Good insight. Mm -hmm. The question number six is from Caio from Brazil. He asks, uh, what parameters sh should be taken into account to decide the best breeding strategy for each situation? I'm sorry, Philip. Could you yeah. reply because uh, cut again the end of the question? Uh, what, né, what parameters should be taken into account to decide the best breeding strategy for each situation? I don't know, maybe he is asking about uh, which traits we should consider. Yeah, I would like to say I'm not a breeder person. <laughs> First of all, I would like to say that. Uh, but uh, it's an uh, area, um, it's a very interesting area. And uh, I'd like to say the, the first one, it's the volume. The, we need wood material. We need 
we need um, wood. So the first one, it's about growth. And the second one, as everybody that have heard about the, the breeding strategies, it's the density because we need mass on the, the digester. We need to cook something there. Uh, we don't need to just a uh, tree that grows fast. We need the tree that goes fast and produced mass. And that mass, it's basically density. And after that, the the chemicals. Yeah, after that chemical composition. So I, I don't know if I get into this question. It's uh, to select it for, it's in general, not for EPG, right, Philip? Her, his question, it's general one. Yes, it's, it's a general question. Okay, yeah. I think so. Um, Based on the general question, I would like to say this, but <clears throat> this, those are the principal ones. And uh, now the breeders has uh, a variable that it's involved all these one that I talked before. This is about the specific consumption. And this is very special number that you can base your select uh, Cons, you select to 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 your genotypes, and uh, Philippe, feel free to add something because you you are a breeder one. <laughs> no, you are you are right. That's it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, if we went deeply more into the chemical components or chemical content, I would like to say the ratio. SG, the syringe and guaiacil ratio, it's also important to know uh, if the, the cooking, if at the digester will be like easier or not, if you need to use more chemicals as a alkali charge or not. Yes, it's a good uh, trail as well. <coughs> Sorry. Dalton asks, uh, uh, after your study, considering your material and levels of EPG, is it possible to affirm that EPG affects more chemical composition than physical properties? Yeah, totally. I'd like to say totally affect direct the chemical than, than physical, because if we, we look into the, the tree physiology. When the tree starts to stress, the tree creates strategies to keep survive. And uh, for example, I don't know if you remember when I showed to you the, the exudates and the mine crunkers close to the bark in the stem. Uh, this is great because the tree uh, uh, needs to survive to this event and the cambium start to produce more chemical like phenolical components that could uh, keep the some insect away from the tree or any other uh, biological disease because if some tree is start to to get this kind of stress, the uh, abiotic one, after that, you could have a biotic together because the plant starts to have less energy to survive. And this is the strategy. And because that, I believe the tree produced more chemicals on the wood, but that will depend which level is the stress that we are talking about. And uh, the physical is not like in this situation is not so affected, but in the different studies, as I mentioned for that two person, Ana Paula and Juliana, uh, they find difference of the density. So I'd like to say that we depend which level of stress are you studying and uh, what is the condition for for the the trees in that situation okay unfortunately we don't have much time left so i'm gonna ask the last question for you 
okay? <laughs> uh, it's from Luciana, from Uruguay. Which regions of South Africa, America are mostly susceptible to eucalyptus physiological disorder and why? So this is, is a very sensitive question and um, I'm not confident to say for sure, but based on our studies that it's happened uh, often, I may say often, on the north east part in Brazil. But again, <clears throat> that could occur in different areas. And sometimes uh, you do you not realize that problem in your forest is related to the environmental conditions because the environmental conditions are changing. So once we have the climate changing, we could have this problem in different parts that we depend <clears throat> which clone are you using? <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. So which clone are you using or which is the, the level of the technology? Are you, um, may I say that, uh, are using in, in your breeder process? And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, a very sensitive question and um, it we need to take care to to for sure say is that area or those areas because that can affect the choose of the companies and i'm not confident to say that thank you guys i'd like to thank dr brunella one more time and all of you for your attention and good questions uh, be turned on the LCP social medias for more talks like this. See you next time. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay, thank you. And thank you for having me here this day. We, we had a really great time. And thank you, Philippe, and the other Philippe, and the Iara, Juliana, and Marcela. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great time. Thank you. Thank you.